so <coughs> so we have studied about in process inspection in the last class and we will be continuing the in process inspection class with uh, with the headings under the headings marker making spreading cutting sewing sewing and uh, and uh, fusing screen printing embroidery pressing and finishing and after that we will talk about final inspection so please understand this we are doing three topics raw material inspection in process inspection final inspection in the raw material inspection we have studied about zippers avoiding zipper problems interlinings sewing threads four point grading system four point fabric grading system and uh, correlation between fabric quality and apparel quality and so many other things <coughs> in the last class we have studied about the importance of in process inspection and now there are what is the in process procedure for garment the in process procedure for garment is marker making so all of you are if you have undergone training you might have known about it and uh, what is the in process procedure marker making spreading cutting sewing fusing and uh, embroidery and finishing so these are the points pressing and finishing so now we will study about <coughs> what are the in process inspection procedures for all these sub topics so first i will study it. so first we will we'll go one by one so first we'll study about marker making things to check in marker making process are first point parts check that all pattern parts are there and no part is missing otherwise missing parts will not be cut and there will be delays in production later on till missing parts are cut this will also result in additional cost so this is the first point check that all the pattern parts are there so check that all the pattern parts so cuffs collars and all the parts of the shirt if you are building a if you are um, tailoring a uh, sewing a shirt then no part is missing otherwise missing parts will not be cut so that is one important we have to check that all the parts are available and all the parts should be ready otherwise there will be delays in production later pattern alignment this refers to the placement of pattern pieces on the top of the lay with respect to warp and weft or veils and cords of the fabric <laughs> so <coughs> pattern pieces this refers to the placement of pattern pieces on the top of the lay with respect to warp and weft or veils and cords of the fa fabric pattern pieces normally carry a grain line 
generally pattern pieces are laid down on the top of the lay in such a way that the grain line should be parallel to the warp and wheels in woven and knitted fabric so the grain line is like that is the central line so pattern alignment so first i will read and then i will show you where pattern pieces are laid across the width of the lay the grain line should be lay parallel to weft and courses in woven uh, and knitted fabrics respectively if this alignment is not followed the finished garments will not hang and drape correctly on a body when worn resulting an unacceptable garment so so this is one more important point what is the important point the grain line should lie parallel to the warp and wheels in woven and knitted when pattern lines are pattern pieces are laid across the width of the lay so it all depends on the width of the lay whether pattern pieces are laid across the width or across the length of the lay so so i will uh, what i am i am i want to tell you about i will show you what is a grain line i hope i will find it i have shown you i have shown earlier your seniors so let us see grain line this is not uh, internet is slow so ah uh, yeah so, so you see the grain line that is the grain line the red color one is the grain line so please understand uh, the other points also basic bodies front basic bodies back and so this is the grain line you see here crosswise and lengthwise so so this is the grain line for pant and grain line for shirt so this is known as grain line so so you understand now i hope you understand now what is grain line <coughs> so okay anyway let's let me not waste time on this so this is about grain line you you have seen all the pictures of grain line so so what is the author saying pattern alignment means all this these are different kinds of patterns that you see in the picture they are different kinds of patterns these patterns should be aligned according to the lay lay means this it's a uh, laying of the fabric so marker width third point marker width must be same as the effective fabric width so 
so marker should be of the same width as the effective fabric width is equal to fabric width minus twin selvedge selvedges of the width so obviously selvedges will be there and their width is also considered so marker width is the width of the fabric minus the selvedge width if marker width is narrow or smaller than the effective fabric width if marker width is narrower or smaller than the effective fabric width some of the fabric will not be cut and will go to waste if the marker width is wider or larger than the effective fabric width some of the pattern parts will be cut smaller than required which will result in unacceptable defective sub assemblies or garments laid wrong so if the marker width is wider or larger than the effective fabric width so if the marker width is wider or larger than the uh, than the effective fabric width some of the pattern cuts parts will be cut smaller than required which will result in unacceptable garments sub assemblies so this is one more important point so marker width is one more thing first one is parts i am i want to i will repeat after the six points are completed checks and stripes must match accurately next one is knife clearance there must be enough space between two pattern lines on a marker to allow for the thickness of line, knife if there is not enough knife clearance patterns or parts will be slightly smaller than required resulting in the garments not meeting the sizing standard or requirement notches and drill marks proper positioning of notches and drill marks on markers is necessary so that the notches and drill holes will be placed correctly on cut parts as they are necessary to guide sewing machine operator so they can accomplish their operation effectively proper functioning of, of notches and drill marks on markers is necessary so that the notches and drill holes will be placed correctly on cut parts as they are necessary to guide sewing machine operators so the author talks about knife clearance and notches and drill holes drill marks so knife clearance there should be enough space between two pattern lines so that a knife can cut the garment according to the pattern line if there is not enough space then in that case knife clearance knife there should be enough knife clearance that means knife should pass through the fabric upper uh, uh, through the fabric so that uh, so this is what it is so knife should have enough space to cut the fabric that is knife clearance next one is notches and drill marks i will show you what is a notch and what is a drill mark i'll show you what is a notch most of the if you know the terminology then you can write anything in the exam if you don't know the terminology so these are the notches so please see this so this is the notch things notches so these are the notches 
so you see he is cutting the notch there is a, there is a scissors cutting the notch so this is one more notch notches so that v shaped things are called notches so here this is these are the notches so notches and the drill marks should be placed perfectly so that it will be easy for the operator to cut the garment so what i am doing is i am just giving you the giving you the figures excuse me giving you the figures so that you will understand a picture is worth 1000 words more than 1000 words so i can say 100 times notch is this notch is this notch is this but you will never understand but if you look at the diagram once it you will understand easily so so notches and drill marks i have shown you so i am not able to get the drill mark so drilling means they are going in the in internet is taking to drilling machine so this is notches so this is about notches so this is one kind of patterns uh, patterns of the so here you see 1 cm notch 1 cm notch so there is a wrong tick there is a right tick so please understand that and uh, you see the parts of the pattern it is a one pattern given here shoulder seam line arm hole seam line side seam line basic body is front basic board is back so these are the seam lines you all know what is a seam a seam is a stitching uh, area where uh, stitch stitches are done or sewn so <coughs> shoulder seam line arm hole seam line side seam line so shoulder seam line arm hole seam line side seam line these are the parts of the marker um, um, pattern making so in the in process inspection of the so i am coming to the subject in the in process inspection of the garment we are going through there are 6 to 7 topics in that first we are studying marker making in that first we have seen patterns parts so parts should be all the pattern parts should be there if they are missing then there will be problem at the end and the operating cost will go high next one is pattern alignment so these are the patterns they should be aligned with one another so that a garment is produced perfectly next one is marker width so the author talks about marker width which is equal to fabric width plus minus not plus minus selvage width so that is about marker width and knife clearance so knife clearance two pattern lines should be should have enough space in between them so that a knife can pass through so that is about knife clearance next one is notches and drill marks so notches and drill marks are placed sufficiently well so that 
the in process inspection process goes on well so this is about pattern making so i will try to play a video of pattern making if that is possible 5 minutes 2 minutes video so that you will see so uh, there is they are there so you can uh, i'm just showing you the giving a hint so you see there are so many online videos you can see them what is pattern making and so now i right now i can play one video but uh, so so this is these are the garment construction and so so you can go through this so that's enough so <coughs> so you can uh, go through the videos of pattern making and learn about what is pattern making youth ke you are all in industry so you can learn there also and you can learn uh, on the online also so we are talking about process quality and control in apparel manufacturing we are not dealing the subject garment production i am not here to talk about garment production because that is another subject i am talking about process and quality control in apparel manufacturing so that is about so my topic next one is next one is spreading so we have studied about marker making now we will study about spreading so spreading i i have a small very nice uh, video i have seen i have shown uh, last class people so i will try to show one video because it is easy for you to understand not for me to time pass but for you it is very easy to understand so this is so i am playing a video online clothing store on this
So this is spreading. You see they are spreading the fabric. Operators are spreading the fabric. you see so the fabric is cut and then that is one this is one more let us see this one more spreading machine because spreading machine so not only when I tell whenever you want you can visit video videos for finding out not only spreading and for all the things garment manufacturing so that is about spreading I'm just counting something. So, <coughs> what are, what are the important in process inspection points? Now I can skip I think one paragraph because I have shown you the videos. What is spreading? So spreading. What are the in-process inspection procedures for spreading? What are the following, what are the possible spreading defects? So before that I will read little bit so that one, I don't want to miss you anything. Various factors that can affect spreading should be checked such as ply alignment, ply tension or slackness, going and splicing. The greater the variation either width or length alignment, the greater the waste in pressure cutting because the ends and sides must be trimmed to the narrowest and shortest splice. A tight spread will contract after cutting, resulting in smaller or skimpier components than what should be. A slack spread possesses excess length within the stipulated end of the spread. 
so a slack means with with less tension that may produce extra length because that's that's what it is when it is slack there will be effectively extra length will be there why if it is tense if your rope or thread is held with uh, two two people at two ends with high tension then it will have high length if it is held with low tension then it will have high length high tension length will be 100 cm if it is <coughs> low tension 1 or 2 meters 1 or 2 cm something like that so you understand my point slackness will increase the length bowing is the distortion of filling yarn from a straight line across the width of a fabric so he, this is an important definition bowing is the distortion of filling yarn from a straight line across the width of the fabric so what is a bowing Bo- a bowing is the distortion of filling yarn from a straight line across the width of the fabric this would cause unbalanced stresses in the fabric resulting in slackness and tightness to the ply that will lead to undersized components so also the garment component containing such a defect will tend to twist or distort in laundering or dry cleaning splicing is the overlapping of two ends of fabric of the two ends of the fabric and a short insufficient overlap will result in incompletely cut pattern sections and a long overlap will result in waste so that is our bowing yarn is the important and there is one more word known as skewness so skewness is also one more important thing so these are the important points in the spreading section so we have dealt with <coughs> we have dealt with <coughs> pattern making and spreading so now we will go into the defects of the spreading <coughs> not enough plies what are the i am going to re- low a and low cock <coughs> low a and low cock list the following possible spreading defects not enough plies to cover the quantity of garments required <laughs> plies misaligned <coughs> resulting in on some plies garment parts it <coughs> resulting in on some plies garment parts at the edge of the spread are cut with bits missing narrow fabric <coughs> resulting in garment parts at the edge of the lay are cut with bits missing incorrect tension of plies resulting in fabric spread too tight or too loose causing parts not to fit in sewing and finished garments not to meet size tolerances <coughs> plies <coughs> not all facing in the correct direction that is not all the plies are spread face down face up or face to face as required mismatching of checks parts not fully included due to splicing errors 
spread distorted by attraction or repulsion of lies caused by the static so the plies should be enough the first point the ply should not should should be aligned properly there should be correct tension of plies ply should face all should all of them should face the correct direction there should not be in any mismatching of checks <coughs> so these are some of the spreading defects now we will read about pattern defects pattern parts missing <coughs> correct number of parts for all sizes not included by the marker maker mixed parts parts not correctly labeled in the marker therefore the marriage of a marriage of wrong sized parts patterns not facing in the correct direction on napped fabrics please look into the dictionary what is napped fabric patterns not facing in the correct direction patterns not all facing in the same direction patterns not aligned with respect to the fabric grain i have shown you what is a grain line so patterns should align with the grain line otherwise patterns not aligned with respect to the fabric grain that is another defect line definition spur <coughs> skimpy marking either the marker did not use the outside edge of the pattern or the pattern was moved or swung after partial marking to squeeze the pattern into smaller space in the interest of fabric economy skimpy means smaller skimpy means smaller skimpy marking means it is a inaccurate patterning pattern marking where the marking has moved to the lower spaces small spaces generous marking a combination of 0.7 and 8 results in components being suited with with the uh, marker too wide garments parts at the edge of the lay are cut with bits missing not enough knife clearance freedom mismatched checks and stripes notches and drill marks omitted this indistinct or misplaced each spread should be inspected before commencement of cutting for the possible defects mentioned above so the pattern defects are the pattern parts should not miss that is one part the parts should not be mixed patterns should face the correct direction all patterns should face the same direction patterns should be aligned with respect to the fabric grain line definitions should be perfect should lead to accurate cutting skimpy marking so this is about this is about uh, pattern making so we will close the chapter here i am also getting phone call so i have to attend to it so that is enough for 40 minutes for today for you guys